Today, we're going to learn when you should put a technology on your resume. Hey, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Just like and subscribe. Now, keywords have gotten really important as algorithms have taken over the hiring process. But listing a skill in your resume just to get you in the door is not going to help you when you're actually interviewed about that skill. So here's what I do. I break my skills up into four sections. Advanced, excellent, proficient, and familiar. Now, I prefer to build my resume with Zeti. I have no affiliation with Zeti. You can use whatever you want. I like it because it does this. When I go to the skill section, all of my skills can be listed as advanced, excellent, proficient, and familiar. So when I actually hand this resume to somebody, my skills are down here as star ratings. So if someone tries to ask me a question about Docker, I can be like, well, I'm familiar with that, but here's what I think. Now, for me, I'm mainly a software architect. I do C-sharp, back-end work. I think a lot about how to solve customer problems. So I consider a lot of my .NET skills to be advanced. Uh, same thing with SQL, DAP, or Entity Framework, Store Procedures. So advanced is where you're going to put stuff that you feel totally comfortable working in. So excellent is where you're going to put skills that you might not use every day, but you know pretty well because they're secondary to your normal job. Uh, for me, that's management. I'm no longer a manager, but if you gave me a team and said, hey, you need to develop an agile process for this thing, I could totally get up and do that. For someone like you, if you're a web developer, maybe your advanced skill is, hey, you know how to configure a server. Or if you do React, maybe your advanced skill is, hey, I do stuff with the database. It's anything that's complementary to your current job. Now, proficient is where you put stuff that you occasionally use or maybe you've been tasked to maintain. I call this the takeover for Helen section. If you can take over for Helen when she goes on vacation for her DBA duties or for her web design duties, then you can call yourself proficient in this area. For me, that's SQL Server reporting. I've done SQL Server reporting before covering for somebody else. I'm not great at it, but I can kind of figure it out. Now, familiar is going to be where you put technologies that maybe you used in the past, or let's say you had an internship and you used Swift for three months, but now you don't use it anymore. That's for this section here. In my case, this is where I put Linux, Ansible, Docker, Git. Um, I do not consider myself a Git expert. I check into Git, I pull from Git, I clone from Git, and that's pretty much all I do. So I consider myself familiar with Git. But if someone is looking for Git on a resume, at least now it's on there as a keyword. Now, if you're just getting out of college, maybe you only have two sections of proficient and familiar. Proficient is going to be most of the languages that you developed with in college. And familiar is going to be the stuff that maybe you study during an internship. The strategy of having these levels of proficiency gives you the best of both worlds. It allows you to put a skill on a resume, but still managing expectations when you roll in for an interview and someone asks you a question about a language you're not entirely familiar with. Good luck on your next interview.